Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my PHP message board tutorial, where I'm going to show you all that goes into creating a message board. And I'm, to a certain extent, going to make this about as complicated as it can and add a gazillion different features. And this is also a review of pretty much everything you've learned throughout my web design tutorial. Well, in the last part of this tutorial, part three, if you haven't seen it, definitely go back and watch it. Otherwise, this will be confusing because I'm going to jump right into this and act as if you've already seen that tutorial. Back then, we created a link that was emailed to the people. And you can see here all the workings that went into creating that link so that whenever the person was emailed this link they would then click on it and it would then activate the account if they did not activate the account through email they would not be able to log in it's a security provision what we did was we took what you have right here this link right here and then followed by X is equal to this is going to be their user ID and then this is going to be their activation key and if we jump over to the terminal you can see that the user ID right here is one and then the activation key is this gigantic organic thing that somebody's not going to be able to guess. And also, funny enough, I actually spelled my name wrong. But either way, let's get rid of that and let's jump over to the browser. So what's going to happen is they're going to be emailed something, they're going to click on that link, and then all this information is going to be here. Of course, it's not going to say local host, it's going to be whatever the website is. And then you can see here, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to, and this is the activation code. Well, if they click on that, and go there, you're gonna see the account is now active and you may now log in. So everything is all set up. And if we jump over into the terminal, and rerun this, you can see now that this is set to null and the account is now active. So now I'm gonna get into exactly all of the code that goes into creating this activation script. And all of the code is on newthinktank.com. You wanna download it. Now we're gonna create the rest of our program here. So what we have here in the beginning is just the header section, which we talked about in previous tutorials. This is the login section, which is gonna put up links based off of if the person is logged in or logged out. That is all that I have pre-done, just to save myself a little bit time and now I'm going to jump in here and just start writing this code so again this is the page that they're going to go to to activate their account so I'm just going to put an h1 tag in here activate account all right so that's going to go to the top of the screen everything else is the same from before PHP now I'm going to be sending two variables one's x one y x is equal to the user ID y is equal to the activation code and so I'm going to say if is set Meaning, if these x and y variables are sent, I'm going to then perform some operations upon them to see if the information sent is valid. And I'm going to check if the user ID was sent first off. And if it was, I'm going to set this to an int because I know it's going to be an integer. I want to treat it as such. Else, if x was not sent, I'm going to set the value of x equal to zero or false. And then I'm going to check if y was sent which is the activation key. I'm just gonna copy this, scroll that up, and put Y inside of here. Put Y right there, and Y right there, except the activation code is not going to be an integer. It's going to be a string, so I'm just gonna get rid of that because I don't wanna convert it to a string. And again, I'm performing exactly the same tests. And then I'm gonna to check to make sure that X is greater than zero, because it has to be. And string length of Y is equal to 32, because we know ahead of time that this is going to be a 32 length activation code. If all of those things are true, I want to set activation to null, where user ID is equal to the user ID that they passed, and active is equal to the activation code that they passed over, and I'm escaping data for security reasons. This is in the header file to make sure nothing bad was passed along to this guy. And I'm going to limit this result to 1. And then I'm going to store the result of this query, or if there was an error, I'm going to trigger an error message. And then it's up to you if you want to actually put the error out there to screen if you wanted to do that, which you probably don't, but if you did, that's what you'd do, right like that. Let's scroll this up. Now I'm going to print a customized message to them based off of my result. If the number of affected rows is equal to 1, because if they're performing that query and they haven't messed around with it to try and break through some sort of security, there's no way it could possibly affect more than one rows. And let's put an H3 tag and say your account is active. You may log in. And then close off the H3 tag. Else, if more than one row is affected, well, you'd actually probably want to tell your log files that somebody's messing around. But let's just say, and let's just copy this and paste that in your account is a mess. <laughs> you definitely wouldn't want to do that, but it would be fun. And I'm going to put else in here. 
and I'm going to define exactly the URL that we're then going to send them to, which is going to be the host that we currently are on. And then we're going to take their current location, which is what the variables in this array do. There may be a trailing slash, which we're going to, going to want to get rid of. So if there is a trailing slash like that, or, and substring is just taking a sub part of that string, and negative one's gonna get me the very last part of that website address that they're currently at. And if it is there, you wanna get rid of it because we're gonna slap on our own page. And this is the page that we're gonna be sending them to, which is just index. And then to actually send them to the index page, we're gonna call header and change the location to URL which is the index for the current site that they're on, which is gonna be my site. And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to exit out of the script. And actually, previous to exiting out of the script, you're gonna to wanna to close the database connection as well. And then put a curly brace in there, and then that's it. And that is how you create the activation page for your website. And that will help you with security, and it will help you with numerous other different things, and I've already showed you exactly what that's gonna do. In the next part of the tutorial, we're actually gonna be able to log in. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.